One of my viewers wrote in and wanted to see a video of my Dell Optiplex 745's hardware. So here's the video. We'll start off on the front cover, then we'll look inside. This model was from 2007, I believe, and uh, it was made for Windows XP. Whoa, there we go. Camera's having some problems. But it was uh, Window Vista capable. I'm not really an advocate for Window Vista. I use it from time to time, but uh, the reason why that's notable is because these machines that were Window Vista capable came with slightly better onboard graphics chips so that they could run Aero themes. And again, I wouldn't buy this just because it does Window Vista, but that means it can also run Windows 7 uh, without any upgrades, really. And uh, most likely it can run newer versions of Windows after that, too. This is a Pentium D machine, so it's pretty much a dual-core Pentium 4, and it's clocked at 2.4 gigahertz. I mean, oh, 3.4, rather. I don't know where 2.4 came from. It's uh, at 3.4 gigahertz, so it's pretty powerful, um, at least by the standards of the day it was made. This would have been a pretty decent machine back in its time. It's not that powerful compared to what they have today, but it does just fine for me. This uh, is, I use this machine almost every day. It's got my calendar on it, all my emails, uploads and renders all my videos. So uh, it gets quite a bit of use. Here's the Dell logo. Pretty typical. Actually, we can put this light on and we'll see it better. There's the power button. There's like some uh, tape or whatever residue over the front cover. I did buy this used, so it's not, you know, in pristine condition. At least not cosmetically anyways. I should have put the light on before. It's recording much nicer now. Anyways, uh, above the power button we have uh, two USB ports. They're USB 2 and audio in and audio out. I've never tested the audio in all the years. I've had this never needed to use it, but I have tested the audio out and that works just fine. And then above that we have a floppy disk, of course, because I like to be obsolete, and a CD DVD drive, which I believe is original to the machine. Now I have done a fair bit of upgrades to this since I got it. The only thing that remains the same is the power supply, which uh, is 275 watts, I believe. We'll get a shot of that here. And uh, you have to just pause the video if you really want to see what that is. Okay, and we'll also take a look at the specifications on the CD drive. Unfortunately, it bears the Made in China logo. So the uh, the CPU cooler is stock. Well, mostly. Uh, this th these coolers have the world's dumbest design to them. They they take air and pull it in the front here and they blow it that way into the machine. Which is dumb because, especially on these Pentium units, that's a lot of heat going into that machine. And it blows right over the hard drive and the capacitors, which is just not good. So, that's really dumb. So what I did was I opened up the cooler and I reversed the fan so that now it draws air in this way and blows it out of the machine. So the the CPU is not necessarily getting room temperature air over it anymore, but there's not going to be a whole lot of residual heat over in this area anyways. And uh, it turns out the machine runs much cooler now, and the fan rarely gets up to full speed like it used to. So I would definitely recommend doing that if you own one of these machines. The hard drive is not original. The original hard drive was a Hitachi Desk Star drive, and that failed a couple of years ago. So I replaced it with this Western Digital one. 
I don't recall exactly what the size of it was. I want to say it was 160 gigabytes. I don't remember for sure. If somebody really wants to know, I can find out. Uh, but this new one is 500 gigabytes. It has five operating systems in there. And it's Western Digital. It's a good drive. It's, it's quiet. I'd rather have a loud drive, but most people like quiet drives, so that's that. I'll pull this off here. It's SATA based and uh, it's got the uh, cooling fin underneath there. Zoom this out a bit. And uh, actually, one thing I want to underscore here about this, this uh, fan modification if you do this, you really have to operate the unit without the cover on, which is what I do. And the reason being is because it kind of throws off the way this cooling system was intended to work. And these are far from aerodynamic cases, but the air is supposed to come in here. It goes theoretically into the hard drive fan, which blows out the back, and then the power supply blows out like that. If you're pulling air in the front, you know, you're going to just have no air coming in the, in the case. And it's going to have problems because that's blowing out because this typically is facing the other way. That's blowing out and that's blowing out. So there's really no way to air, you know, way for air to come in. So if you do the CPU fan modification, which is recommended, I, which I recommend you anyways, uh, just keep the cover off. Anyways, that was a side note. So um, as you can see here is all the capacitors. And they typically would just have heat wafting over them, which is stupid. So that's no longer an issue. There is a stock graphics chip. It's an Intel onboard graphics. I don't remember exactly what specifications it has. I don't use it anymore. I did use it for the first couple years I had this machine. And uh, it runs Windows Arrow just fine. You know, you can open two or three windows and then it you know, starts to get kind of jag jaggedy. But otherwise it's fine, you know, for basic stuff. Does Windows XP just fine? Plays videos all right. We got some RAM in here, three gigabytes. I'm not exactly sure how it's working. I think I have just two sticks in there, but I don't know how, how that works. Anyways, there's three gigabytes. I'm not exactly sure how I'm getting that from two gigabyte sticks, but maybe these are 1.5 gigabyte sticks. Oh no, that's a two gigabyte and that's a one gigabyte. Okay, that makes sense. So this is two gigabyte Samsung RAM. And uh, it's probably just DDR. I'm not. I don't even know. I'll see if I can find out. Well, that's cool. The RAM wasn't even in view. This is uh, a two gigabyte Samsung stick. Samsung. Jeez. This is a video. It's turned out to be a disaster. And then this other stick up here is a. Uh, let's see if I can tell what that is. That's also a Samsung. And I don't think it says uh, what version it is, but I'm going to say it's safe to say this is just plain old DDR RAM. I don't think it's anything more than that. So, um, while I have the drive out, we'll take a look at the graphics card. This is the expansion card that I put in. This is an AMD Radeon. I want to say it's a... Uh, 6570 maybe it's a 6750 <laughs> I don't know um, anyways it's uh, I'm not a big fan of AMD or Radeon stuff but there's not a lot of options when it comes to these small form factor cases and I don't have a lot of money to spend on computers so of the options that were available this was the one that was affordable so this is the one that I got it's a plenty powerful card. Right now I have it driving two 1080p monitors. And it does fine, but the, the, the processor bottlenecks everything, so I can't actually get like a 1080p video to play or anything. Um, but, oh well. Who really needs that anyways? So I'll put the hard drive back in here. And I think I've pretty much underscored everything there is to talk about. In this machine so hopefully that was what you wanted to see um, actually I'll show the ports in the back too I suppose that's kind of important
probably going to be a little bit shaky because I can't get the tripod fit back here. But we have power supply. It's on 115 volts. Obviously, that's where I'm at. Audio in, audio out. Ethernet. This does have a nice amount of USBs. I think it's got five on the back. Yep, there's... Oh, no, actually, there's six on the back. Two on the front. So you have a total of eight stuff, eight things plugged in, which is not bad. We have a... Um, I want to say it's a parallel or a serial port for printers. I actually used that for some time. I used to have a really old printer that took that. And we have uh, VGA, and then we have... That serial port of some sorts, I don't know, somebody can tell me what that is. Probably told me already, but I forgot. And then down here we have the uh, graphics thing. It splits into two DVIs, and that's how I get my two monitors going. So, that's going to wrap up the video. I'm not sure what else to say about this thing, other than it's a pretty good computer. And it's got a lot of hours on it, and it serves me well. So, thank you for watching. I'm going to put this video on here and upload it on this very machine right now. So, that is all. Comment, subscribe, and out.